Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering from ELD's Time Vault Games. Here I'm actually on camera playing Cephalid Breakfast versus Luke on a Jeskai build. I'm not positive he actually has standstill in this, as in the past. Really trying to tune this to answer questions that are being asked locally. Cephalid Breakfast, definitely one of the major players. Of course, I always have it built if it's a small turnout. Count on me playing that. October and November were busier months, so I don't actually think I got to play very much at all leading up to Eternal Weekend. But yeah, if we get like seven people, I'll hop in and make eight. As long as I'm not too far behind. It is always a dangerous deck. Here... Early cantrips, ponder, just digging, setting things up. A brutally difficult matchup for control decks. Of course, the deck can win on the second turn, so you have to respect that with your mulligan decisions. The other side of that also has a ton of late game. Protect the combo with Orm's Chant, Tefiri, Cabal Therapy. Of course, counter spells of its own. When a Mystic Sanctuary coming into play tapped, not where you want to be. Certainly a very legitimate criticism of the card. It does slow you down. Of course, the other side of that coin is it is incredibly powerful getting back a card like Fourth Erlingus. Absolutely backbreaking additional removal a card like ponder or brainstorm i mean a really powerful effect incredible amount of utility that it adds to all of your fetch lands that trade-off is sometimes you're just kind of stuck playing a land that only taps for blue and comes into play tapped snapcast or ponder Both players so far just sculpting. Definitely feels dangerous here. Luke will be tapped out, passing into three mana. Combo, of course, only takes three. Some more cantrips. Not enough digging. He just wants the goods at this point. Finds a planes. Here we go, Orem's Chant. This is one of those cards that I actually disagree with the way that lists have been built online. I've been as high as four copies of this, currently playing three. This card, yeah, this time to pack it in. I mean, that, that is it. If that card resolves very little in the format that will actually interact moving forwards. Very Macabre, Aseju, Ottawara handful of cards that that can actually punish you not super commonly played you're potentially going to get cabal therapy so for those unfamiliar with cephalid breakfast if you're familiar with the channel i doubt that's the case so if you are new welcome run you through it here nomads allows you to at zero mana and instant speed redirect the next one damage of course, no damage is going to be part of this equation. It is simply to be able to target Cephalid repeatedly. Every time it gets targeted, I actually mill through. So I target to mill myself out along the way, hitting Narcomoebas, which enter the battlefield, and then eventually having enough bodies to dread return for Thassa's Oracle. There are no cards left in the library. That is how you draw it up. How most of the games are going to go down. It is a clean, powerful combo for only three mana. Really difficult to interact with. A list, pretty solid list, top aided Eternal Weekend. Was some clean deck building. Managed to get a play set of Orcish Bowmasters in there. Trade offs in between my list and that is uh, he got a full set of Bowmasters because I have a couple extra copies of Orem's Chant and Step Through. 
step through is probably my main point of contention. I just think it's so crucial as a four of in this deck, greatly increasing your keepable range while still having consistent pressure for a turn three. Always there. Much less vulnerable to scams. Grief package as well. I've had so many hands where people have turned one, griefed me, and just been like, oh no. <laughs> like this, it doesn't matter what they take. I can still have a turn three win. Be very frustrating. Kind of feel like you have the nuts and instead sit your own doom. Turn one nomads. It's fairly unusual. Typically, if you're jamming a nomads, it's because you're going to be playing a turn two win. Had a different read here. We see Blood Moon in Luke's hand. This may just be such a favorable matchup. Worth it to just slow play until you can get a chant out in front of your combo. There's his saga. Three non-basics. Finding that land. Actually playing it before he puts the two back. He's Decided to have found his third land. However, it is not red, so that Blood Moon not going to be online. We'll be drawing those two cards back over a couple of turns. The construct here. We have mana available here. Super dangerous, even with Tefiri on board. Force of Will in hand. So the decision here, I suppose, is whether or not to make a construct and then another construct and just clear this to Fury or just maximum value or try and just go for the win. Making constructs. Let's see here. Or I suppose you could make one construct and then swing all out at the Fury. Yeah, that might be the line. Single construct is going to be a 1-1. One, one. Tutor up Shuko. That makes it a 2-2. Two, two, and then flip it. And now you have three power. Mystical dispute. If I had a read here. It does kind of feel like the correct line may have been just making a construct. I'm going to have a firefight over this with Force of Will and Force of Negation. Dispute kicking it off. Luke would have had two counter spells. We have Force of Negation on his turn. Let me know. I mean, he might have actually forced a negation on his turn there. In case. Maybe he pitched force a negation to force a will. Force a negation actually a super important card in the matchup because it can exile Orm's Chant. Orm's Chant being able to come back off of a Mystic Sanctuary, one of the more devastating lines. And there we go. Another... Ant into the combo. That's just how you draw it up right there.